Hi everybody, it's the Gregarious Giggler here, and I'm coming to you today to talk about men. <laughs> they buy you dinner, open your door, other than that, what are they good for, men? So I thought I would do a little compilation video of some different, just a few different things that I think you would probably find interesting through this whole dating process. I'm still on that little dating app uh, called Badoo. It's been going okay. I've been out on a couple of dates so far on that website or on that app. I had a great date today, in fact, but you'll have to stay tuned for that in a written blog. The, I wanted to continue telling you about phone calls and, and written conversations that I have with men. This one, there was no back and forth. I got a message from this guy today and I wanted to give you an idea of some of the messages that I get that I never respond to because there's just really, I can't respond to these messages. This should give you an idea, uh, a small idea of what I'm dealing with, um, with with some of the messages that I get. The way it works on Badu is that the guys can send me a message uh, but in order for me to be able to read the message, I have to like him back. And the same is true that if I pay, then I can send the guys a message without them having liked me first. Uh, but if we've both uh, mutually liked each other, I can read their messages without any problem. I will just tell you guys that I am in Italy. It's not such a secret location after all. So this guy and I matched, meaning that I liked him and he liked me. He liked my picture, I liked his picture. And then he sent me a message today, and this is what it says. Ciao. I'm passionate about photography, mostly naked women. Come here, baby. I would like to see some of these types of photos of you. Do you feel like sending me something? Uh, no. I really don't. Thanks, by the way. I'm fine. How are you? So, yeah, curious. I went to his profile. His profile is in Italian and I speak Italian. I'm kind of just shocked with how crude his profile, what it says. Not that I should be since uh, considering the message he sent me. I'm a fairly straight and honest guy. I'm not here for a quick fuck. I'm saying this frankly because I really don't need it and it wouldn't make a difference just to have sex so that I could empty my balls. I'm sorry for being so frank, but I prefer to be clear rather than misunderstood. Having said this, I hope to find interesting people with whom I share common interests. <laughs> if, you, if you're attracted to me, I, why walk away? P.S. If you if in my private photos you hope to find my bird in the wind, you have the wrong po profile, please look somewhere else. And good luck continuing in your search. Uh, and then at the bottom, he's single, he's straight, he's 179 centimeters, which is like 5'9", 5'8", 5'9". He's 69 kilo uh, uh, kilograms. He has, <laughs> my favorite part, Brown hair, brown eyes, living with parents, <laughs> open to having children someday. <laughs> Big shocker. I didn't respond, which is probably even more of a shock, I'm sure. I noticed this morning when I opened up the app that I had, uh, that in the week, I've been on this app for about a week, I've had 942 people like me, so... I must have a really good picture, that's all I can say. There was another thing that is rather interesting, and this has actually happened to me many times since I started the dating uh, project. Last year this happened many times. It's an unanswerable mystery. I'm sure there is an answer, I'm sure there is a reason behind why this happens, but I never know what the answer is. There was a guy that I met on this, this app, Badu, last Sunday. Today is Tuesday. I started chatting with a guy on Badu who 
was Italian and uh, I gave him my phone number and we started talking on WhatsApp and then we started exchanging voice messages and then eventually he called me on the phone. We were on the phone for four hours that night uh, till six in the morning. Okay, that's a long time to be talking to somebody. So we, we obviously liked each other, hit it off very well. Uh, the next day, actually yes, all day, that next day, we texted all day until he went to work at like four in the afternoon and then he wrote me again at 2.30 in the morning when he got off work and we were talking again all night long through, through text. Then the next day happened again. We talked all night, called me on the phone, we spoke for several hours and again we got off the phone at 6 in the morning and just really liked each other and he lives in a town about an hour and a half from here and he kept saying, yes, I, I'll come see you one day soon when I finish my contract. It, where I'm working right now. So I said, okay, great. That, that would be great. I'd really like to meet you. I really, really liked this guy. Really, because we've had a, got a connection going now. Then I had a date on Saturday. And he called me while I was on the date. And he started talking to me, didn't ask if it was a good time. And it was really awkward because my date is sitting right next to me. And I said, actually, this isn't the best moment right I'm out right now could I call you later and he says oh see 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 don't worry it's it's totally fine just call me later no problem we'll talk later and that that was the last time I ever heard from him when my date went to the bathroom I texted this guy and I just said hey I'm really sorry about earlier hey can I give you a call when I get home no response later I tried calling her him and there was no answer and then the next day I sent him a voice message and I said, hey, I didn't hear from you yesterday. I hope everything's okay. I'm sorry that I wasn't able to talk yesterday, but I was out. I was busy. And uh, give me a call later. Never heard from him again. There are other fish in the sea, obviously. But it's like, what happened? I am going to share one story with you that happened to me last year that is going in the book, but uh, I thought that I would give you a little taste of that. Or, no. There was a guy that I met on Tinder who was Australian. Well, maybe you're not afraid of me, but I'm sure you've thought about me naked, huh? Point number one. Very good looking. But I do have a secret thing for Australian guys. I like you. <laughs> it's basically Italian men and Australian men. Those two are my my favorites. A and also French guys. Oh, and I like Swedish guys. <laughs> Spanish guys are welcome as well. I will give you as many moments, days, nights as you need. And when you want me to come to you, I will. You know, I really like when it comes down to men, I really don't discriminate. Je t'aime. Et j'ai hâte de passer le reste de mes jours avec toi. Uh, in short, uh, to recap in a slightly clearer version, uh, in the words of David Cassidy, in fact, um, while he was still with the Partridge family, uh, I think I love you. My name is Frank Taylor. I'm a co-pilot for Pan Am. I'd like to cash this check here, and then I'd like to take you out for a steak dinner. Why? Please, can we take off your shirt? Because really? I can't stop thinking. And then you just... Okay, 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 okay. All right, okay, okay, okay. okay, okay. Foi bom para você e desculpa qualquer coisa. Foi maravilhoso. Você não precisa, não precisa ficar me adulando, não. A gente não vai ter que se ligar amanhã para repetir ou não. Foi só isso. Ficou aqui. O que foi que eu fiz de errado? Nada. Nada. Só me lembrou que eu não tenho obrigação nenhuma. Aliás, nem você. A gente não se conhece, não vai se conhecer, não deve nada um ao outro. Thank you. You're welcome. I was outside. Oh, really? And you didn't hear me? I was listening to... What are you even doing home? Did what? he just did jump me out of nowhere? Why didn't you wait for me? Well, you were dead. Death cannot stop true love. All it can do is delay it for a while. I will never doubt again. There will never be a need. We won't have to raise the stakes. More money? No, not money. 
something that really matters. Keep dreaming, Addison. Oh, how childish and immature, Miss Hayes. Everything to you is sex, sex, sex. I'm after something that really matters. Like what? Your dignity. So this guy is Australian. I I don't think I had ever actually met anybody on Tinder that was Australian because obviously I was living near Rome. So Australians aren't very common in Rome. Very nice over texting and everything. And he said he was in Rome. Uh, and then I missed him because when I wrote him back finally, he had already left Rome and he was somewhere else. I think they were on, he and his mates were on their way to France. They were taking like a road trip around Europe. We, we, we chatted for a few days, I think two days maybe, two days and quite a bit. And we sent each other um, only a couple voice messages and loved his accent. And he in turn liked mine, said that I had an adorable American accent. He eventually arrived in France and said, oh, send me a picture. I think they were in Marseille. He, he sent me a picture of himself in the bathroom with his shirt off in front of the mirror. Oh, I'm not going to say he didn't look good, but these guys, they're always sending me like shirtless in their underwear pictures. Like, why do I care? Uh, and he says, this is a picture of me in Marseille. <laughs> we eventually got on the phone finally calls me. He didn't really want to, but he finally does. He finally calls me. And I can't do an Australian accent, so I'm not even gonna try. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm just here at home. What are you up? Oh, we're at this pub in Marseille. Uh, we just scored some hash. I see. Where did, where did you get the hash? So we were at the pub. This girl who was Moroccan, and we started talking to her. But she knew this guy who could get us some hash. My first thought when he's telling me this story is, You're an idiot! So, not only are you an idiot for wanting to do drugs, period, but you're an idiot because you want to get drugs in a foreign country. First mistake. Second mistake, you want to get drugs in a foreign country from another foreigner. He then tells me that in order to score the hash, the Moroccan girl tells them, we have to go down a dark alley <laughs> from some guy that's waiting for us in the dark alley. And these geniuses say, okay, that sounds fine. You're an idiot! So they go down the dark alley and luckily nothing happens to them. Yeah, I was thinking it was kind of dodgy going down a dark alley following this girl we didn't even know. Yeah, you think? I don't really do drugs. Oh no, I don't really do drugs either. I mean, I do smoke weed pretty regularly, but I don't really do drugs. Oh, well, I don't even do... I don't smoke weed. Wow, you really are a godchild, aren't you? A godchild? What does that mean? A godchild, somebody who's just like, like a really good girl. Yeah, I am. I'm a really good girl. Well, I mean, the thing is, is that I don't really do drugs that much either. Like I said, I smoke pot pretty regularly, but I mean, if I'm at a party and if there's coke, I mean, I might snort some, but other than that, I don't really do drugs. Oh my God, that's doing drugs. How is that not doing drugs? Maybe my sort of snort some cocaine if I'm at a party, but I don't really do drugs. That's doing drugs. You're an idiot. Then he says, but you know, I try not to do drugs too regularly considering what I do for a living. Oh, oh yeah. What, what do you do again? I don't, I can't remember. What did you tell me that you do for a living? I'm a youth counselor helping kids who were addicted to drugs stay clean. No joke. I'm serious. The dude is a youth counselor trying to keep kids off drugs. And he does drugs. This is the world we live in. The story does not end here. Said, I'm sorry that we couldn't meet up while you were here in Italy, but maybe we can stay pen pals or something. Yeah, that would be great. We could talk on Skype maybe when I get back to Melbourne. Oh, that would, yeah, that would be great. I would love that. That would, that would be great. And uh, 
Maybe we could do, we could have a little fun on Skype. What, what do you mean, have a little, have a little fun? What, what does that mean? Like, talk? <laughs> Talking's fun. I don't remember how he phrased it. What he alluded to, he was suggesting that I get naked on Skype. That was essentially what he wanted me to do, and that we could have a little bit of, as Borat would say, Sexy time. On Skype, I said, I'm sorry, but I'm not that kind of girl. I don't do that sort of thing. Oh, that's a shame. Well, in that case, I think that it's best we say goodbye now in part ways. Oh, okay. Because God forbid we be friends. I mean, here's the thing. Do I really want to hang out with a drug abuser? No, I really don't. I was mostly being polite when I said let's stay in touch. Because who knows? If I'm in Australia one day, now I know somebody who lives in Australia. The fact that he ended it with me because I won't get naked on camera for him, that might actually be sadder than him being a youth counselor for kids who are trying to get off drugs while he's doing drugs. I don't know which one is sadder. The, the, the whole idea that you cannot have a friendship or you cannot build a relationship on anything else other than sex these days is really disturbing and very troubling and this is why this is why you don't have a girlfriend and more importantly this is exactly why I don't have a boyfriend you're an idiot if you give them what they want they never